Hi again then guys and welcome to another specific car review of course from the world of GT Sport and this vehicle is another returning face to our reviews. We talked about it in GT6 just like with the Corvette Stingray and there are a couple of things about this car which I think are very interesting topics for discussion and I'll briefly touch on them in this video but both of them are kind of subjects which you could easily talk about a lot more in beards and cars so I might revisit them in the future but the one thing that I wanted to discuss about the 458 is this concept of supply and demand what am I talking about? well if you have a car in a game and then the car passes over to the new game seamlessly a day one vehicle in other words people tend to have this interesting response of taking it for granted we don't even notice that the car is still there half the time if however you have a car in a game and then take it away and then bring it back months and months later in for instance an update then there's this strange thing that happens where people want the car whereas if the car had been in the game already they wouldn't bat an eyelid McDonald's even does things like this. They have seasonal foods like the McRib, for instance, in America where they take it away and then suddenly people want it. As a perfect example in GT Sport, the BMW E92 M3. It was already in GT6, it was already a premium, and I never really heard people talking about the car that much. But as soon as you take it away, everyone wants it back again. Is it a mind-blowing vehicle? Well, it's a very good one, that's for sure, but it's not going to revolutionize the game or anything like that. However, you already have something as good as a 458 in the game, and yet nobody bats an eye. We just take it for granted. Whereas, imagine how many people would love to see the 458 return if it wasn't in the game, and we saw that it was going to come in a new pack. We'd love that. That's the funny thing about the way people treat things, not just in the game, but pretty much with everything in life. You only appreciate something when it's gone. And that's kind of unfortunate, even other people, in fact. Now, as far as the 458 specifically now, being in the game from day one, easy to take it for granted, but what if you don't take it for granted? What if you actually use the car? Because at 283,000 credits, it's actually not that expensive for an exotic. It's a little bit more than a Porsche GT3, it's a little bit less than a Huracan, so I would say it's pretty well placed. Now I've said before that I'm not a huge Ferrari fan, I'm definitely not a super fan of the 458, but the funny thing for me is, I actually have a lot more almost academic love for the 458 than most other Ferraris. My dream car of course is a Ferrari, but generally speaking I don't love their cars. The 458 though has so many brilliant details that I can certainly see why so many people do love it so much. For one thing, it sounds fantastic in the game, in real life as well, and that's exactly what it should sound like in the game, if not louder. I like the fact that it has the triple exhausts because it's unique and it also harkens back to the F40. But above all else, and this is the second thing that I wanted to discuss, a very interesting theoretical conversation about why certain cars are as good as they are. Because I've had this theory for a while that the best mid-engine Ferraris, not just in terms of how quick they are or how competitive they are, but in terms of driver enjoyment and how much people love the car. There are two in particular, the 458 and the Enzo. And if you look at the design of both of those vehicles, they share something very interesting in common. And I believe I have talked about this before on the channel, and it's what I would call a nose-heavy design. If you look at the, the side profile, in other words, of a, of a 458, look at the rear bumper, how much it overhangs at the back of the car. It's not very much at all. If you look at the front bumper, it actually protrudes quite a lot over the front end. Likewise with the Enzo, the rear bumper is relatively short, but it's got this long nose cone. And it's not just Ferraris that do that, even the Noble M600 has a very similar shape to a Ferrari 458, but with a slightly longer back end. What do those three have in common? Well, all three of them are among the best and most desirable exotics in terms of handling. Not just in terms of lap time, but in terms of driver enjoyment. I think there's a very interesting conversation to be had there about the potential theory behind whether or not the shape of a car can make it feel better. No, I'm not talking about aerodynamics, I'm not talking about um, weight distribution. All of that is well-known stuff. I'm talking about the actual shape of a car. Can it make it feel better? The obvious answer is yes, but I think there's a very interesting mathematical conversation to be had there regarding stuff like the Fibonacci sequence. The Aston Martin 177, I believe, was designed using that sequence of numbers, the so-called golden angle, which you can see a lot in nature, such as petals on a flower or a nautilus seashell. It's a very efficient 
angle. It allows maximum compactness, but also maximum beauty, which is why Aston Martin used it when designing the 177. I think there's an interesting similar conversation to be had as to why some of the best Ferraris have this particular design, where the rear end is very short and the front end overhangs by quite a lot, because that doesn't sound like a great idea. It sounds kind of counterintuitive, for instance long tail cars, race cars or road cars like the Celina S7 or the Porsche 962, they have the exact opposite. Very short front end, very long back overhang, and they handle very well, they're very stable. Ferrari does the exact opposite, and yet it works brilliantly. And the result with the 458 is that it actually allows it to be extremely nimble. And I would say, actually, that this car possibly has the best handling of any exotic of its type in the game. I would literally go that far. And as I said, I would not even put it in my like top 100 favorite cars, but it's a brilliant car in this game. It sounds fantastic, it looks great, the interior looks fantastic, of course my dream car is the FF and the interior looks very similar, so I'm happy to be in the car in cockpit, uh, cockpit view. But the handling is out of this world. It's insanely good. I'm on sports soft tyres, I haven't upgraded the power at all I don't believe on this car, I might have actually reduced it a little bit. And in terms of the weight, I believe I did drop it some, but even then, Dropping the weight only makes so much of a difference, even to the best cars in the game. So, the way this thing handles, it's incredible. It corners like it's on rails. It actually corners more like what you'd expect from a Ferrari 458 Challenge, the actual competition, competition spec machine, with racing tyres and the roll cage, stiffer suspension, and of course you can kind of do that yourself, and that's one of the reasons why I think it turns out so well. Now, in terms of using the car, that's another great thing about it. It's great as a Blue Moon Bay vehicle, because it's 283000 to buy. You can detune it to, what, N500 easily enough, and then you can win about, what is it, 315000 for a clean event. So the car literally pays for itself in just over 10 minutes. I mean, what kind of better deal is there than that? Earning your car and literally using it to race and pay for itself immediately. But then beyond that, it's a great circuit car in multiple classes. It's already got close to 600 horsepower, so it handles itself very well with a lot of power. And although it's not the quickest of things in a straight line, it's no slouch. It's the kind of car that I would recommend mostly for a combination of very tight technical circuits, potentially even city tracks, but in particular tracks which are kind of that middle ground, something like uh, Lake Maggiore or Laguna Seca, if that was to come back, or Ascari. It's a perfect car for those kind of circuits. So overall, I think it's a very interesting observation that cars with that kind of design can be so good. Again, mentioning Ascari, the Ascari A10 has a similar design as well, relatively short rear bumper and quite a long front bumper in comparison. Very interesting, but that's a discussion for another time. For now, I'll say the 458 is a brilliant performance car in GT Sport. I like it way more than in the previous game. It sounds good, looks good, handles like incredibly well, and all round, it's a brilliant car that you should definitely own and definitely try out, if not use regularly. So overall, that's it for this review. I might even do a tune for it tomorrow, because for those who haven't experienced this kind of handling, I want you to. It really does handle that well. So of course stick around for that, and for now, as always, thanks for watching.